Well, it's been a while since we've been here. We're running a little late. All the rain and bad weather is, has us uh, several days behind. We're here to check these colonies. I think they should be ready for their second box now. We left them with that two gallon bucket. We're also doing something else today. We got some strips from Canada. We're gonna do a little experiment with these oxalic acid strips that we got out of Canada. Uh, Cayman Reynolds told me that they're pretty good. I'm anxious to see how they compare to the homemade version and the Viroxan and all of that stuff. So we're gonna put, it's time that we're gonna start putting strips on everything except for a few yards. A few yards are gonna be left untreated because we're gonna start looking for mite resistant stock. Um, but this particular yard is gonna get treated. These are Caucasian queens for the most part, which uh, doesn't matter. That's not what's gonna necessarily dictate whether they get treated or not. Um, anxious to look in them. Again, we're running a little bit late. Hope they're in good shape. Not up to any kind of mischief or anything. So, okay, John and Selena, everybody's going to get four of these strips and um, and a feeder, an inside feeder, which we will put in the bottom. And then the second story box, 10 foundations. We're going to put, we're going to refill that two gallon bucket, put it on top and fill up the gallon and a half inside feeder in the bottom box. What I'm hoping we see is that we can pull two frames out of the bottom box that are drawn out, maybe even a brood or two. Doesn't, although that's not necessary, as long as it's drawn out a bit, it'll act like a magnet comb to draw them up into the second box. So, uh, bait comb I call it, <laughs> bait comb. And Joe, we're going to have you running because we've got a lot of equipment. And we've got several. In the next two days, we have a bunch of yards we're going to be doing this exact same thing to. All those new yards on Persimmon are going to get the same routine. Uh, the two War Woman yards. Um, seems like there's a couple more, too. A lot of equipment's going out in the next couple of days. So, going to keep you running, Joe. <laughs> so we're going to try installing these strips two ways. One way is they're, they're, the instructions are saying bend them over and put them down between the frames. Um, I know what that does to the comb. It leaves kind of a concave portion wherever the strip is down there, which I don't like. Um, I've talked to a few other people that have been using these and they are of the opinion that they work just as well. One guy even said he thinks they work better when you just lay them on top like that. We're gonna try both ways. This single was really good. Yep. And John put two frames in the top that are in the middle of being drawn out. So uh, that's good enough up there. They'll continue up there doing that work. Let's see what this one looks like. So that one's a little smaller. Actually, they're working on all the frames, aren't they? Yeah, that's, what, yeah, that's this exactly how this one looks. Perfect, when you put that feeder down there, you can pull two of those frames up into the second box. <clears throat> yeah, perfect. Those two frames will work great. And the other thing I would do, this frame right here, it it's being drawn on one side. I would turn it around. Let's see what it looks like. This perfect. Just turn it around. Let's see what the... Um, we're just videoing and having fun. Let's see what the brood pattern looks like on there. It looks a little spattered, but that's because there's pollen in there, isn't it? Yes, pollen there's pollen. Is, yeah, right. okay. All right, John, let's see what yours looks like. Now that one over in that corner was just a nuke. It was in a five-frame nuke box mating a queen. Still looks pretty stout for having just come out of a five-frame nuke box. Yeah, not quite as... This next frame, which is... <clears throat> Next to the outer frame is awesome. I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah, lots of good pollen there. They got eggs so I would, I would do. Flip, the, flip that one around. Well, or put the. They got the pollen on this side. Okay. Let's just leave it with the pollen facing the brood. Okay. 
Oh yeah, very nice. Very nice, actually. Now, Selena, um, yes. these strips, see how John's got just a little more distance between each strip so they can crawl between them? And I'm just guessing, this is kind of new to me. I've not used these type of strips before. Yeah. And we're gonna do some alcohol washes in this yard. In fact, probably need to do those soon. Yeah, I think you could turn that one around, John. Okay, all right. Yeah. I need a better one for upstairs. I was gonna take that one upstairs. I'm just going, all I got is uh, Well, you know what's gonna happen? If you leave just foundation in the bottom, okay. they're just gonna go up. No, they're they're not gonna draw sideways. They're gonna draw up okay. more than they go sideways. So we're just a little thinner than one to one, close to one to one, but just a little thinner. Sourwood is about four and a half weeks away in this location. And the idea is to get the second story deep box completely drawn out before the sourwood starts. And I think it's going to be no problem. As long as we can get here on time and keep the feed on them, uh, this will be a double deep colony in time to put sourwood supers on. I often state that we like to get a green frame, a drone brood frame in every colony, and we don't always get it done, but this is a good opportunity to get one in each colony right now. And it's starting to rain. Imagine that, John. Right, what, so, do you know? right, what do you know? It's not going to rain hard, though, so we'll keep on trucking here. So, we just gave that colony three and a half gallons of feed. I prefer the concept of feeding with buckets for drying out frames as opposed to inside feeders. But in this case, we can't get back often enough to keep that two gallon bucket full. So, um, we're adding that gallon and a half feeder in the bottom. That should keep them busy until the next time we get here. And when we get back, I, I, I expect several of these frames to be drawn out right here. Yeah, they did good with that other They did good gallons. with the last two gallons, yeah. With three and a half gallons. Well, they didn't have that feeder last time, so it was really only right. two gallons. So now they'll have three and a half. And we're putting Hive Alive additive in our syrup. I got a good deal on a large quantity of Hive Alive. Um, Honeybee Healthy would work too. It keeps it from fermenting, actually conditions the syrup. That's almost as important as any help it gives to the bees. And uh, Honeybee Healthy can cause robbing in dearth periods. And I think, I don't know why, but the Hive Alive doesn't seem to cause as much trouble in that respect. Let's see, show what John's doing here. There's a problem with these man lake feeders. Over time, they get fatigued and the three rubber bands is not enough to keep those bulges from occurring. If bees go down and get in that feeder, it turns into a massive mess. You get dead bees in there, and then that's where high beetles can just create major havoc. So John's just putting some sticks in there to make that those bulges go away. Um, I was watching Jake Moore, one of Jake Moore's videos, and uh, what he's doing might be something that we want to do in the future. He was putting a block of wood in the middle with accordion bent screen down in the feeder. I used to do that a long time ago before I started using these Man Lake cap and ladders, and we may play around with that. Okay, so... Um, yeah. These are old feeders too, I have to say that. I've had these particular feeders for quite a long time and they just become fatigued with age. <clears throat> so this lid says GW, that stands for Golden West. This is a Golden West queen in here. A little smaller than the last one. But they are drawing foundation out to the edge. Okay. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with that. There's 
there's that California cage in there. And that's a scattered pattern simply because there's pollen all over the place. Yeah. Okay, so this one was a virgin queen on 4-8. Let's okay. see what's going on. I would say she probably took. <laughs> okay, let's see. Yeah, they're looking good from here. Oh gosh, yeah. Yeah, I can see. Oh yeah. I'd say she made it, John. Yeah, I'd say she's doing all right. Uh, I know it takes time. Just take a fast minute and see if you can spot her and mark her. Okay. Don't spend a lot of time if you don't. If you don't uh, see her on a fast go through, just okay. don't worry about it, but okay. it'll never be easier to mark than right now. Okay. I'm really getting big on marking queens for several reasons, not just so we can spot them easier, but so we can tell if they superseded. I think that's particularly important when we're trying to deal with these new genetics we're bringing in, see if they changed out the queen. And also how old is the queen? You know, say so we're marking them blue this year and uh, it really helps know just what we got going on. Yeah. And plus, the one of the reasons it's becoming more important is that um, I used to be really good at finding queens, but if I, as I've gotten older, having that mark on there really is a little benefit to me personally. And we never get used to just, ex just assuming there's a mark on the queen. I never look for a marked queen. I'm looking for an unmarked queen, but if she happens to be marked, of course, she's a lot easier to spot. I'm going to end up missing this one on camera, too. You're going to miss this queen on camera, John? <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Actually, I I actually. already been on one of those frames. Somebody. Yeah, John is extremely good at spotting queens. Well, well now you're going <laughs> to mess me up. This you better I, find her, John. You is, you can't pull her down. You're like, yeah, John's really good at finding queen. I totally missed her, and everybody else saw her. <laughs> <laughs> I re yeah, I remember that video yeah. where everybody was saying, "There's a queen." Yeah, I put my hand. Apparently, I, I didn't realize that, but I rubbed my hand right next to her while I was like, you know, looking for her, and mm -hmm. I didn't even <laughs> I totally missed her. That's all right, John. Not everybody can be perfect. There he is. She is right there. She's already oh, marked, yeah. but that's a dark blue. Oh, she blue. is marked. Yeah, let's put the light blue on there. She's trying to run away. We use the dark blue for writing on the lids, but for, for marking the queens, we like the light blue a lot easier to spot later on. Okay. We actually left a few supers on here the last time we were here and they've done absolutely nothing with them so we're actually going to treat them like we're treating the smaller colonies. We're going to take the supers off, the excluder off, and put a deep on and go ahead and start feeding them and grow them into double deeps. And that way this entire yard will be double deeps just before sourwood starts. And this nuke on top here was a virgin queen mating. My guess is there's two virgin queens there. A lot of times we'll leave a nuke sitting on top in case the bottom turns into a dud we can use that nuke to fix it and if they're all good then we can use a nuke for something else. The cicadas are pretty loud right now. We haven't heard them for a few years but boy they're coming on strong today. I'll just be quiet for a minute and see if this camera microphone will pick them up. I know they go through a cycle. Uh, we don't hear them every year. It's been a while since we've heard them, so I guess this is their year. That is really loud. Just up in the woods right there. 
You know, if we didn't know what that was, it'd be kind of spooky. Yeah. They're really cool looking. You, you got more down there, John? Yeah. Yeah. Why wouldn't these be making noise, though? Kind of pretty and ugly all at the same time. Yeah. Hmm. 